What's up guys, Travis here with Modern Bay Company. As you guys know, we do Subaru conversions into vintage Volkswagen bay window buses. It's totally our thing. Uh, it's all we do um, is, is this. Um, and so today's video, we just went to game plan this video and it went like this. Uh, Jess, who's standing behind the camera was like, what are you gonna do? And I was like, install it. And he's like, all right, great, let's go. <laughs> so so, that was, so uh, kind of shooting from the hip here, but um, if you watched our video that we just posted, which is unboxing this guy, um, it was probably the most riveting seven minutes of your life. Um, but now we're here, we've got everything unboxed, ready to go. So uh, we're gonna start uh, pretty simple with our uh, adapter plate right here. Uh, Jess, can you grab the anti-seize? Let's forget that. Um, and we're gonna open our hardware kit, just ruthlessly open it. Give no heed to anything in life, but, but opening it. Um, and then just dumping everything out, making a huge mess. Um, it's the funnest way to do it. Uh, I can't say it's the best way. Um, I'm just, well, I was kidding until that just happened. Um, so what you've got in the bag is you got some dowels. Um, are these called dowels? I feel like that's actually not the right word for it. Um, that's what I'm gonna call them. I'm not real sure. Um, and <laughs> Look at our editor video if you want to know what they're actually called, because I probably called them the correct thing then. Um, but for now, we have these guys. They're going to go in this plate. We're going to get a close up, bring it far away, all the angles. Brr, brr, all angles. <laughs> um, it's Friday afternoon, guys. Uh, we, <laughs> we're here. I'm recording a video. Things might get a little weird, but um, let's do it. So in this kit, we've got four shouties, <laughs> four short bolts, I warn you. Um, and then we've got four longer bolts. Um, this is actually the install on this. It's the same as our other video. It's the same as the one for manual transmissions. Um, I'll still see if we can do this, just so in case you guys lose the instructions. Yeah, yeah. Up, up, up a little bit, there you go. Boom. In case you guys lose the instructions, don't have them on hand, hopefully you can screenshot that. So that's the uh, War and Peace uh, version. <laughs> uh, that's the all the written version. And then there's this. Oh, Jess wants it over there. Maybe there we go. Yeah? Yep. All right. So that shows the placement for um, whatever you're using. Uh, but for us, for now, for here, uh, I'm going to whip out a bit of anti-seize uh, on these guys. Uh, this is a step. Honestly, I used to not do this on, um, on these bolts. But at some point, I think because somebody commented on YouTube, I was like, you know what? Why not? I want to put some anti-seize on them. Um, we do things that I know have a tendency to get seized. Uh, these I've never had a problem with, but they're going into the block. Um, and heck, why not help out the next guy? Now, the thing is, if you brush a little anti-seize on your shouties and your longies and whatever, um, the torque value does change um, slightly. So. Whereas the torque on these, if I remember right, it's 20, yeah, 29 to 35 foot pounds um, for, for the bolts that uh, bolt the adapter plate to the engine. Uh, I'm gonna go with 35. I might even go a little bit higher than that, just because like I said, uh, this slicks things up a bit um, and does change torque values. So uh, that is that. Another thing I'm gonna do just to prepare myself for all the screwing of all the, um, bolts is uh, put this on. So I'm like doing this all at once here so I can just mad dash, uh, go bananas and screw all this stuff in. You can do this as you go, of course. You don't need me to tell you that. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. And uh, Loctite, a thread locker blue on these. That's the stuff you wanna use um, as opposed to red. Uh, which I used to use when I first started out. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> so um, here we go. Um, this guy, so you'll notice you have two uh, pins, uh, centering pins, whatever you want to call them, in your, on the back of your fancy schmancy motor. Um, and they're really helpful. Sometimes you can use a rubber hammer for this. Other times you can just use your hand. Um, I'm getting real hot. Get a real hot, get a real hot, get a real hot. Take my jacket off. 
I didn't get a lot of sleep this week. Uh, we got four young kids and sleep in our house was uh, a high, high commodity that did not come easy. So <laughs> 45, the longer bolts, they go essentially on your corners, even though this thing doesn't quite have corners. Jess, could you grab an impact of the 45 yeah. on it for me? Thank you. Um, all right, long guys, long guys, all the long guys. And then this is kind of nice, I gotta be honest, uh, already having anti-seized these guys. Um, just getting them all in. Now, normally, and as you'll see, thank you. As we'll see in our other video, I go crisscross and whatever because it's just like what I'm used to. So um, you'll see that and then I'll go round robin. But um, Jess, can you also get the torque wrench ready and set at 35? 35. Safety first, kids. There we go. Okay. So torque wrench set at 35. Here we go. Going up to 46 on that, guys. Fired. Just kidding. Um, it's, we're, we're fine. Um, okay. Boom. Nice and solid. This guy's on there eight different ways. Um, so that's great. Now we're going to do our little bitty dowels. What do you think? Are these called dow dowels? Studs? No. Better, no studs. Yeah, yeah. Studs. <laughs> what a stud. All right. <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> the correct word. All right. A stud knows a stud. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, here we go. We got one, two, three, so it's short, 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 and then long, and no sirs and ma'ams, we are not done getting this on. You may notice as you're screwing this in that it screws in like this because it's slightly bent. Um, that's pretty normal. You can just get your rubber mallet or whatever and bop it in the correct direction if it's not lining up with your transmission uh, mount points when you go to line it up. Uh, but don't worry about it. Don't call Kennedy and be like, hey, this is kind of bent. It's okay. It'll work out. Um, all right. So as you guys have maybe seen before, we're about to be double nutting some stuff. It's going to take a little finesse. Um, actually, now we're doing it like that. It's fine. All right. Okay. Double nut of those together. Oh, yeah. I'm watching my shaft. Um, turn you don't wail on these guys do not like whop uh this is aluminum and it's it's just it will strip get it good and snug till you see a, a vein or two popping in your forearm so the only other thing when you're double nutting there's just so many jokes I, I'm, I'm just not gonna touch it uh the only other thing um is when you're doing this uh when you're releasing the nuts from each other makes just watch your Watch your shaft and make sure it's not, um, you know, spinning. Uh, make sure it's staying put. So life advice, Volkswagen advice, Subaru advice. It's all here on the Modern Bay YouTube channel. Okay, there we go. All right, things are heating up. It's time for this doodad. Um, guys, I gotta be straightforward with you here. There were no instructions for me that Kennedy sent specifically on installing this, but using my keen powers of intellect, I'm pretty sure it's got, pretty sure this guy just uses these bolts to bolt into the crank. Um, there's no other way this could work. So, and it does have the torque values for these, which are no more than 55 foot pounds. If you screenshotted the instructions earlier or just want to listen to me now, either way, uh, no more than 55. Um, really, I mean, it says, you know, no more than 60 of the bolts will stretch. Ain't nobody want to stretch these bolts. So, oh, and yeah, no anti-seize on these. Uh, this, this torque is, is more important. So no anti-seize, otherwise you will be quite sad. Um, I was just kind of examining stuff to make sure it's nice and clean, looking good. Here we go. This is what it looks like. Um, this is directional. So, um, boom. Like yay, the little protruding part goes into the uh, flex plate. Um, and then this part into there, because this protrudes here, which matches up, makes sense. Um, so here we go. I'm gonna stab one bolt, just like I do when we do the manuals. 
I'm gonna try to awkwardly do this while you watch and not be self-conscious. <laughs> it's working okay. All right, so we got one. And getting these in one at a time. So of course I'm pushing inward um, as I'm you know, starting to screw these guys. I'd like to introduce you to my assistant. Jess. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so Jess, this is my brother Jess. You guys have seen Jess before. Um, so he's gonna hold the crank with a strap wrench. Let's show him that strap wrench. All right, guys, I've used some real crappy strap wrenches. Um, here we go, this is the Gates brand, I don't know, belt pulley wrench. Uh, we use this thing all the time in the shop. Uh, you could find another way to keep the engine from turning, uh, but this is just quick and easy. If you have a second pair of hands in the shop, Bulls out. Um, so Jess is going to hold the crank so this doesn't turn while I torque it down. Um, all right, we're at 55. And I want to be aware of not going too high, of course. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. I'm yep. going this way. Oh, yep. Okay. Ready? <laughs> so every time I put the, the belt wrench on, I put it on backwards. Thankfully, every time Jesse puts it on, he puts it on correct. <laughs> so you ready? Yep. All right. And we're twerking. Twerking. And oh, come not on, quite. Lord. All right, we twerked one. We finished twerking these down and uh, I marked them with a paint pen because that's just what we do with everything. So we know all this is fully torqued, fully ready to go. Finishing the video here. Boom, boom. Um, I gotta stop recording videos today. This is just getting ridiculous. Um, okay, so this is the dust. I call it the dust cover. It goes on the bottom. This is how it comes. I'll do this video, that's how it comes. And then we modify it, so that's how it ends up. And we do that because the instructions actually say to put this on before you put the adapter plate on, but then you're sandwiching this part between the adapter and the block. I don't like that because if you ever wanted to remove this for some reason and see how much oil is leaking at the rear main seal or whatever, you couldn't. Uh, you couldn't, you probably couldn't pry this out if you wanted to. So uh, what we do is a quick and easy modification just with a Dremel. Um, and make it so that this can be installed and uninstalled uh, easily. So, um, so yeah, I want to put this up there and then my two little bolts, I actually just put a little wave washer on them um, so they don't fly out at any point, but oh, that feels good. Um, that just now goes right up, sits flush and is great. So with that final presentation, I almost did the oh, like the angel sound, but I'm not doing it anymore, guys. I hope not. I hope that doesn't disappoint you, but I'm over it. Uh, oh, I'm just kidding. I'm not. Uh, this is it. So boom, there is your Kennedy Engineering Products um, adapter plate, flex plate, um, and the little doodad in the middle uh, for automatic transmissions. Not for Subaru automatic transmissions. If you're doing that jam, talk to Todd over at Subaru Gears, you won't use something like this. If you're doing the Volkswagen automatic transmission, this is what you're using. Should have said that at the start. If I didn't, oh well, I did now. Final words, final thoughts on this. Uh, we'll, we will do another video talking about all the modifications to the Volkswagen transmission uh, for use with the Subaru motor in a bay window bus. Um, but real quick, the ideal scenario is that you're actually using a transmission uh, from a Vanagon that has the two ports on it for uh, the external oil cooler so that that transmission uh, runs nice and cool and has a good and healthy and long life. Um, and there's a bunch of other modifications, but um, ideally, uh, if you're just thinking about, hey, I need to gather parts for this build, um, the parts you want to gather, ideally, um, are, you know, a Vanagon transmission. I believe it's 090 um, is the body uh, part of it that you would want. So, yeah, there we go. All right, another uh, maybe successful or not so successful YouTube video here on the books. Thank you guys for watching. Again, I'm Travis with Modern Bay. This is my brother, Jesse. Who you don't see, there's his hand, uh, who you don't, <laughs> you don't see, and uh, we're building things. So uh, if you guys are interested in getting on the schedule, 
uh, let me know. I'd be glad to talk to you. We're typically booked out uh, for about the last year. We've been booked out a year, year and a half. So if you're thinking about it, just send us an email, uh, let us know. And we're happy to just answer questions. So uh, if you you know are thinking about it, you're not sure, you're not sure if you have the budget, the time, whatever it might be, uh, time to do it yourself, uh, give us a shout and we'll just point you in the right direction. So, all right, I appreciate it guys. Thanks for watching, bye.